The Obama administration is giving China more time to show it is not manipulating its currency. In a carefully worded statement over the weekend, the Treasury Department said it will delay the release of its semi-annual currency report to Congress. For some congressional reaction, we head now to Capitol Hill and Bloomberg's chief Washington correspondent, Peter Cook. Peter. Well, thanks very much, Lori. Here on Capitol Hill with House Ways and Means Chairman Sandy Levin of Michigan. He's the point man on trade issues for House Democrats. He's with me again here during this congressional recess to talk about this decision from the Treasury Department. First of all, thank you for the time. Appreciate Glad you joining us. You again. Uh, what do you make of the Treasury asking for this extension, this delay in the currency report? A lot of lawmakers criticizing this decision, saying essentially they're giving China a pass, at least a temporary pass. What do you make of that? No, it's not a pass. I think it's quite different, and it's not more of the same. It's for a definite period for a defined purpose. The definite period, there are talks are going to be underway the next three months, multilateral talks. And the purpose is to see if there can be action by China. Its currency is clearly undervalued during these three months as part of a multilateral process. So it's, it's defined in purpose in time. And did you get any heads up from the Treasury Secretary? Did he ask your advice on this issue? Did he give you a warning this was coming? We did talk about it. And, and again, why are you so confident that perhaps, do you expect China will move in this interim period? I don't think it has a choice. I think the multilateral pressures are growing. It's the U.S. We're losing jobs. Businesses are losing ground because of it. But other countries, the Treasury Secretary's in India today, and they're being hurt by it. So China must change, and that's the message that really has to come through. And they'll either do it through multilateral action, or as I said, uh, we'll be left but, but with no choice but to act on ourselves. And what would that action take? Say at the end of this period, China has not moved, as some lawmakers' fears uh, may play out. What's going to be the response from Congress? There are various options that uh, Congress can take. We can urge Congress to use uh, their authority and they have the authority in this kind of a case. Also, there are further actions we can take under uh, the legislation. We passed, I was going back over the history of this. In 1988, I was here. Over there, we passed the 1988 Trade Act. It had currency provisions in it. We wrote it here, there to be a source of action when there was an undervalued currency, when one country rigged their currency to help them and to hurt us. Previous administrations simply failed, refused to act. This administration is different. This administration is different. You have assurances that, again, if China doesn't move, that this president is prepared to sign that kind of legislation into law? I believe I don't have an assurance about a specific action because the administration wants to see if it can be done multilaterally. I'm confident China needs to act. If they don't, this administration will, and so will Congress. There's a talk about uh, the president wants to, of course, boost exports from this country, set a target for that. You've raised questions about whether or not that can even happen under the current currency practices of China. No, no, it's very difficult. We need to double our exports. In order for that to happen, countries have to take down their barriers like Korea, Korea to, our, to our industrial products. Also, China has to stop rigging its currency essentially to help them with their jobs and hurting our jobs. They have to increase consumer demand. We have to take steps to make sure we're fiscally responsible. They've got to change their currency practice. Everybody knows the, Berg, the, the, the Peterson Institute says it's an undervaluation up to 40 percent against the dollar. So our exporters start with a disadvantage of 40 percent. Say it's only 30. That's huge. And that means their products come in here cheaply, and that undercuts our producers. I hear from them all the time. They can't compete and export if China's sending in products that undercut our production. So there's a mutual interest here, and this administration has said, let's see if multilaterally we can pursue mutual interest. If not, we'll act on our own. What's the new deadline for this report? When should we expect it? The G20 meets the end of June. I think that's the critical date, as I said, for a defined purpose and a definite period of time. All right. House Ways and Means Chairman Sandy Levin, thanks very much nice for your time. To talk appreciate to you, again. you joining us here thanks. on Capitol Hill. During this recess, Lori, we'll send it back to you in New York. I appreciate that, Peter Cook, there in Washington.